Hi everyone. I hope you have watched the previous two videos I made on oral examination checklist for second mate and chief mate candidates. If not, the video or the links to those videos are in the description section below. In today's video, I will take you through the oral examination checklist as issued by the Australian Mate and Safety Authority or AMSA for candidates appearing for master's oral examination. This checklist may have been issued by AMSA, but I strongly believe that any candidate appearing for oral examination anywhere at this rank will find this checklist very useful. So let's start. Now, when you will look at this checklist initially, and if you compare it to the chief mate examination checklist, you will find that most of these topics and the description of it is very similar. So initially you may feel that it is the same checklist, then why do we have something different? Uh, please make sure you go through the checklist carefully because you will find little differences between the two checklists. And this is where uh, your role as a master will be assessed. So remember here, again, goes without saying that when you are undertaking master's oral examination, you cannot have the luxury to call master in situations where you are confused. Here you have to talk like a master, act like a master, put yourself in a situation where you are the master. So whether it is uh, officers calling you uh, in situations where they are in doubt, whether it's rule of the roads, whether it's restricted visibility, you cannot call the master. You are the master. That goes without saying. I'm sure you understand it yourself. As a master, your focus should be on legal um, conventions, laws, uh, certification, endorsements. Uh, these are the areas that the surveyor will like to assess your knowledge. If you are undertaking examination in Australia, then of course, Australian regulations and law, uh, go into the AMSA website, find out about the marine notices and the marine orders. Um, that is what is assessed mainly. So not so much uh, the international conventions, but the very particular Australian conventions, which are related to the international conventions. For example, uh, you may not be asked questions about SOLAS, MARPOL directly. Uh, the surveyor will expect you to answer these questions based on Australian marine orders which are a reflection of the SOLAS and MARPO. So I don't want to read through the checklist because you can do that yourself. Uh, if you want to download this checklist, go into the AMSA website and type in AMSA 249 or oral examination checklist for ships masters and you will find this checklist. What I want to highlight are important things that you should take note of. For example, if you go into the stress and stability section, uh, as a chief officer, of course, this should be your first and most paramount important section that you should be preparing for. Similarly with ship's masters as well, after, after the law and after the legalities and the conventions and all that, as a master, that should be your priority, uh, certification um, conventions and law. After that, you should be uh, knowing stress and stability very thoroughly uh, because uh, these are the areas uh, where officers can commit mistakes and put the ship in a precarious situation. For example, if what will you do if, you, if your ship develops an angle of load? Or how do you load a ship as per the load line convention? How do you comply with the load line convention uh, while loading maximum cargo to fulfill the company's commercial interest? How do you not compromise on safety? So remember, as a master, just like other officers uh, or oral examination, you cannot compromise on safety at any point of time. Uh, no matter how much commercial pressure you are put in there, you cannot compromise on safety. So as a master, that is what the server will be assessing as well, whether you are prioritizing earning money for the company or the safety of the crew. So you have to achieve that balance, right? But prioritizing safety of the crew, of course, safety of ship, the safety of life, safety of ship, safety of cargo in that particular order. As a ship's master, I will not focus too much on bridge equipment, navigation charts and publications. I'm not asking you not to study it. I'm saying this will not be in my top four or five priority areas. So how do you prepare for orals is you prepare all the areas thoroughly. Uh, but sometimes you may lack the time or sometimes you have prepared the areas, all the areas on a surface level. And then a few days before your oral examination, you want to go into the depths of each area. 
that is the areas i am highlighting here so my my areas or the areas uh, that i would really go into the depth of as a ships master candidate is of course like i said law and then stress and stability all right not so much as um, standards of watch keeping bridge equipment navigation charts this is more for second mate and chief mate candidates cargo work as well i will not go so much into the depths of it but then again my third and important uh, section will be ship handling a ship handling is a section that is assessed mostly for ships master candidates because as a ships master you must know how to handle your ship you must know about the handling characteristics the maneuvering capabilities um, what to do uh, or how to uh, assess the uh, ship's uh, movement as per the engine movement um, how do you uh, test your engines before arrival um, so on and so forth so how do you test the maneuvering capabilities of your ship the responding characteristics of the rudder so on and so forth then of course your search and rescue is the next section because master is responsible for carrying out search and rescue so knowing everything about sar publications imsr manual responding to distress messages although it's not given here but responding to distress messages all that what is taught to you in gmdss comes in handy here then of course essential shipboard equipment and machinery which includes your anchoring systems and watertight integrity of the ships emergency equipment how to make sure that everything is always kept in uh, ready condition or good condition um, that is the next section i will focus on however as i know after talking to a lot of surveyors rules of the road is essential for even ships master candidates so no matter how many oral examinations you have cleared no matter how many years you have sailed as a second mate or a chief mate if you are unable to answer questions in the area of rules of the road although you may have answered all the other sections um, very well the surveyor will frown on on it they will not be very happy so they might fail you just because you have not been able to answer questions related to the rules of the road so make sure i cannot stress enough that make sure you consider rules of the road as much priority as the other sections i have highlighted like law and uh, emergencies and search and rescue and then take care of it after that if you have time then i will come to other issue or other um, areas for example uh, bridge equipment navigation charts and publications and standards of watch keeping other than that the other areas is what i will focus mainly on so it's pretty much a lot to study still i have not said it's not to study prevention of pollution is also an important section for a master uh, like i've said before uh, any time you get the opportunity to demonstrate to the surveyor that you are very mindful of prevention of pollution please mention it that will impress the surveyor especially in emergency scenarios so the surveyor may give you a scenario of collision or grounding uh, as an emergency at that point of time make sure that you mention about taking care of the pollution because if you mention everything but you overlook the prevention of pollution the surveyor will again not be very happy with your answer all right so i hope that you uh, found this video useful i don't like to take you through each and every point of the checklist otherwise it's boring anyone can download the checklist and read it uh, why i make these videos is to highlight the important bits and pieces for uh, you guys um again and the type of ships you have sailed on will come in very handy uh, you must know everything about the type of ships you have already sailed on and for the type of ships you have not sailed on then a theoretical but a strong theoretical foundation is very important all right thank you for watching today's video guys and good luck with your studies all the best with your oral examinations and uh, let me know in the comment section uh, what you thought about this video bye for now